All right, another toolbox top review. What do we have here? Oh, this this is uh this looks like it's going to be fun. You know what this is? If you own a diesel truck, water filtration by Baldwin, fuel filtration by Cat. We got a couple of uh Baldwin filter bases. Got a whole bunch of parts in here. Ooh, stainless fuel line. Fancy. Got some uh, rubber fuel lines. Man, we got all kinds of stuff in here. Hey, hey, nothing like sending a card. You know it, baby. Diesel fuel kits. Can you read that? That's where I ordered it from. I believe I spent 250. Now, filters are oh, let's just say 30 bucks for two of them. The the bases are 30 bucks, so they're 60. So we got 100 bucks in filters. I figure we got probably another 50 dollars in uh, some really nice fuel lines, stainless steel. Compression fittings, some specialty bolts that are going to hold this CNC machined bracket. Let me get it out of the bag here. There you go. There's our website, dieselfuelfilterkits.com with a phone number. Really nice powder coated CNC machine, quarter inch steel. I don't know. What do you think that bracket's worth? I'll tell you what, the bracket and the bolts. It's worth the extra hundred dollars that this system cost me, as opposed to me piecing this thing together. So we're going to go ahead and throw this on the Dodge. This is going to get me down to a two micron fuel filtration, as opposed to the factory seven to ten, which is not good. But I do offset that by putting the Baldwin five micron PF seven nine seven in the factory fuel housing, which I will continue to use as a secondary water separator and a secondary fuel filter to catch anything that this system might lose when I change filters. So this is going to prolong my injectors. Give me cleaner fuel, keep the water out, and they say it's a 40 minute install. Cutting the fuel line. That's the only thing that I uh, might have a little bit of uh, saying, mm, this might be scary. So uh, I'm going to do it. Remember, I'm just an amateur here. Oh yeah, they did send you some color instructions. 35, 40 minute job. And you know what? You know Jim Cattori on Weather Channel? We got it baby. Tropical depression going to a hurricane. Coming in off the coast of Miami. So let's see if we can get this done before the storm hits. Or I'm stuck here. <laughs> Alright, first step we're going to join these two bases together. One side is just a straight thread. The other side has an adjustment screw that you can... Um, take this bolt down toward the other side so the non adjusting side is going toward the back filter and the adjusting side is going toward the front filter this will be your water separator this will be your fuel filter you want to make sure you orientate these the correct way as you see in a diagram right here there is a cutout this cutout is going to be toward the rear of the assembly and that's going to be facing the other one. Otherwise your fuel won't fil filter correctly. And if you get somehow confused, if you flip your bases over, incoming fuel filter, or arrow, arrow, incoming fuel, arrow, arrow, outgoing fuel to the engine. And they're going to be coupled together. All right, we got the one tightened up. The second one, you can see the little gap right there. Used a uh, one inch wrench. We're gonna go ahead and mount this to the base and then we're gonna tighten that one up. Okay, orientation, you have the long skinny piece here. Opens up, here's your slot here, there's your slot there. And we're gonna mount this and then we're gonna tighten that. All right, so you have eight bolts, eight lock washers, eight flat washers. So go ahead and set those guys up. All right, we got the back filter just snug, not really snug. Bolts are in. Nice grade 5 bolts, really nice. 
and you can see that there's uh, some room we got to take up. So now we're going to go ahead and tighten that up and then run those other four in. All right, we got all eight bolts in. Bases are mounted up. The nut is still loose. We're going to flip this over and we're going to tighten these down with a 9 16 inch box wrench and make these nice and tight. All right, we got that all nice and tight. Now we're going to run this up and get that tight. Get a one inch wrench on there and we're just going to tighten that down. All right, you're going to put your uh, 10 to 6 fittings on and go ahead and tighten them up. catch the back side. So this is what you should look like at this point. If you've got the skinny flat part going to in, open spot going through, both of these are tight, opens flat spot and then comes out and then your fuel goes toward the front truck. All right we're on page two. We're going to do the seat bolts. Got to take the factory seat bolt out and we're going to install these next and the way the picture looks at it I'm believing your grade 8 washer is going to go on top inside the truck and that's going to separate and that's going to go below the truck and we're going to end up with that. There's the old seat bolt removed and there's the new seat bolt. It's a little bit longer which is what you're going to use to mount that to which is going to hold your fuel filter base. The factory seat has an 18 millimeter speed wrench I have here which I love and the new one going in is a three-quarter so I'm doing it old school. I got the new one in and I'm just gonna have to uh, like I said since I don't have ratcheting wrenches here hint to the wife be a nice Christmas present. All right torque that puppy back down. That's the new one installed and here's the old one. And of course getting the old ones out is really nice. 18 millimeter the ratcheting wrench they always ask you to what do you want for Christmas honey hint I want SAE ratcheting wrenches you get the point here I'm gonna be here for a while all right got both them seat belt and seat belt seat bolts both them seat bolts in and torqued all right, collar goes on next, and then the bolt three quarter. Use uh, some hand tools here, no air. Right, here's your new seat bolt. I'm gonna put this up there, get it up around that little lip there, and then you're gonna use a four millimeter Allen key, which I have right here, and we're gonna tighten that up on both of those, and that's what's gonna hold the bracket. All right, so you got it on. Get your Allen key in there. Tighten that puppy up nice and secure. Now you can put your bracket on with the fuel filter bases and tighten it up with those two supplied lock washers. Lock nuts. Alright, got your bracket on there. Tighten that up. And then, you know, they gotta be funny. Let me get up in here. There's where that one is. That's gonna be a box wrench. Yep, that one's gonna be fun. But the bracket is a nice cut. I mean, it really looks nice sitting down in there. I just hope that my uh, skid plate here isn't going to be in the way with the filters. That would be an aggravation. All right, tighten it up. All right, a couple things now. We're going to put the J-line on, and we're going to install this to the bracket. This is going to keep it from vibrating and hitting the bracket, and then we're going to install both of these fuel fittings with the hoses on them. So this, I think the plastic off. And put this right here. And that's going to go toward the truck, and then that is going to go in that little hole right there. So let me shut the camera off. I'm going to need two hands, and I'm going to hook that up next. That's all hooked up. Now we have the J line. It's in the bracket. Got the fuel line. That's going to go up toward the front of the truck, and then got the back fuel line coming to the back of the truck. So we're going to cut out a substantial amount of metal line here with a metal pipe cutter and uh, put those compression fittings on it. 
I think we're going to end up cutting somewhere in here. And then up front, probably somewhere like right here. And take this bendy thing out. I don't want to lose that bracket there. And I don't want to lose that front bracket up here. So we're going to do some cuts in the middle there. And just trim that fuel line back. And then we're going to put the fittings on and put the filters on and prime the system. So we're at the stress part in my world, cutting the fuel line. I know it's probably going to be simple, but you know, hey, never done it, and you always get a little anxiety going on. But other than that, the system has been a complete joy to install, minus that one nut, and everything's real simple and straightforward and easy to put in. There it is. I just cut that much fuel line out. It was tedious. There's a good portion of fuel that came pouring out, probably about 16 ounces. So I'm going to go uh, wash off because my arms are covered in diesel as I was cutting it. It was just rolling down me. And uh, put those uh, fittings on, which are right over there, waiting to go on. And then all i got to do is attach the fuel lines, put the filters on, and I'm done. We are 99.9 mine points at done. There's the uh, completed system. It's installed. Had a little uh, fuel drip, drip, drip on that fitting. Uh, tightened up a couple turns, not a couple turns, but a couple, uh, like maybe a quarter turn, and it stopped. And then the other fitting is up there. Both filters uh, primed them up. Truck started right up. Looks good. I'm happy with uh, how it sits up in the frame. And my skid plate covers it. So I'm like real happy with where that goes. Those guys really did a nice job on that design. Real simple. The only uh, issue I had was while doing it, it freaking rained. So it poured out here. So I was under the truck working on it while it was pouring rain and I was getting soaked. Oh, there's a, a view of it from the backside. Like I said, very happy with the way it's set up and the way it sits in there. So it's time to have a stogie, and I just happen to have a stogie that's called Diesel. <laughs> what an appropriate cigar if you put the fuel filter on the Dodge. <laughs>